today we are glad to welcome René Borel from UC San Diego. René is going to present a joint work with Daniel Dimitriev and Simone Calperti entitled Learning from Shared News when abundant information leads to belief polarization. Well, I don't think I need to present René. She has substantial contribution on micro theory, political economy, international trade. So thanks a lot, René, for being with us today. It's a, it's a great pleasure for us. Um, just before to start, let me remind a little bit the rules of the, of the seminar, despite, I guess, the good is uh, really used now. So René is going to make some break at some relevant moment. And during these breaks, you can unmute yourself and you will ask your questions directly to, to René. Um, be aware that the, the talk is recorded. So if you don't want to be on the video, you just ask your question directly through the chat window and I will ask the question to, to René during the break, okay? Okay, I think that's it. I spoke enough. Uh, René, thanks again for being with us. We are looking forward to listening to your talk. So the screen is yours. Thank you. Thanks, Oliver. And uh, thanks to everyone for inviting me. Uh, this is a great pleasure. Um, and it's 7 a.m. here. So uh, if I'm slower than usual, uh, please forgive me. Um, okay, so the title is, uh, as uh, Oliver said, Learning from Shared News when abundant information uh, leads to belief polarization and its joint work with uh, Daniil Dimitriev, a PhD student at UC San Diego, and my colleague Simone Galperti at UC San Diego. And um, I just confirming I have an hour for this talk. Can you just confirm that? Yeah, you have actually uh, 45 Less than minutes. an hour. <laughs> okay, perfect. Okay, basically you have 45 minutes plus 15 minutes of questions, but you there is less questions, you can speak longer, and anyway, at the end, people can leave if they want or, or keep going to the discussion. So let's say you have Perfect. a comment. Exactly. Perfect. Um, so uh, please feel free to uh, interrupt me. I know we have a lot of participants, but uh, I still do like questions as we go along. Of course, if questions get too much, I, I, I'll just uh, defer them uh, till later. Uh, okay, so uh, why are we interested in polarization as an object in and of itself? Uh, this is a, an economics audience and uh, an economics talk. Uh, and um, of course, there's a lot of literature identifying uh, different problems created when there are political divisions, uh, gridlock, low legislative quality, uh, inequality, um, difficulty with security of property rights, trust, investment growth, uh, and the list goes on. Uh, so uh, one thing that we've also observed in recent times is increasing polarization, at least in the United States. Uh, and when we talk about increasing polarization, uh, it can be in the form of either policymaking, so there are DW nominate scores that uh, illustrate this. We can talk about media. There are a lot of studies about uh, how the uh, media rhetoric is uh, more polarized. Um, and uh, certainly we can talk about public opinion, uh, which is probably a little less studied. But in terms of public opinion, there are a few studies. Uh, Desmond and Batsyarg in uh, 2018, uh, of course, the Pew Research uh, Center, uh, and they have identified this di divergence in public opinion, particularly uh, in uh, pol the political sphere. Um, uh, Alison et al. in 20, um, uh, God rest his soul, um, uh, did identify, again, this um, divergence in opinions, uh, and it's a particular divergence in opinions over something that's objectively a, a verifiable state of the world. So for that reason, we, we think about belief polarization in this paper. Uh, and the question we ask is, uh, can it be driven only by how people share information? Uh, so there's no fake news, no media bias, uh, none of these things that have previously been uh, sort of focused on uh, in terms of driving um, uh, polarization. But of course, uh, we're, uh, we make the observation that uh, polarization has been increasing in the uh, in spite of the fact that there's more information about, right? So through the internet, through sharing of news uh, with your friends, there's simply more access to information uh, as, as technology increases. Uh, so uh, if you think about standard learning models, Bayesian learning models, this is inconsistent uh, with uh, that fact. Um, and of course, we're not the first to identify this. There are papers against Gao et al, uh, who I also identify this. Uh, and some have looked into empirical um, connections between the internet and polarization, and at best, the evidence is mixed. There's a famous paper by Boxell et al. Um, 2018 uh, that concludes that the internet does not drive polarization, 
But ever since then, there have been other studies finding different results. So what we hope to do is present a model uh, that can actually capture this, uh, this, these facts um, and help to guide uh, folks who, who, um, who are interested in studying uh, these things empirically. So before I uh, jump into this slide, I do want to mention uh, that this is a very non-typical economics taught. There are no preferences. There's no game. Uh, and there's no even optimization problem. Uh, so if you're looking for any of those things, you're going to be sorely disappointed. This is purely a model about information sharing. So the uh, brief sketch of the model that we produce uh, is that you've got agents, several agents uh, um, who are connected in some kind of network, but I, I say network loosely, we, we don't really focus on networks. This is not about networks literature. Um, and the idea is that they can learn information either from firsthand information or secondhand information that's shared by their friends. So they can uh, go to the New York Times, read an article uh, themselves, or their friends may read an article in some alternate um, news source and share that article with their friends. That's what we mean by first and secondhand information. So um, then we want to produce this model of information sharing, but we'd like it to be guided by empirical findings. And so the first finding uh, that we're guided by is this uh, idea of selective sharing, uh, that people will share uh, information that really supports their own convictions or agendas. So there's a, a, a very closely linked paper, um, empirical, uh, sorry, experimental paper by Pogoreski and Shum uh, in 2019 uh, that uh, identify, <clears throat> identifies in the lab this tendency to share, uh, share news selectively, and not only to share news selectively, uh, but also uh, for those who receive the news to undercount uh, the selectivity of the sharing or uh, account for it less when they're updating uh, beliefs. Uh, so the other, um, the second empirical finding uh, we would like to be consistent with is this idea that they're unbalanced news diets. So several of us will have, um, uh, you know, friends, a lot of friends on one side of the political spectrum and fewer friends on another side of the pol political spectrum. And it may not just be politics, there may be like various debates. So um, whether uh, vaccinations uh, are leading to um, uh, problems with children, and you may just have people on either side of that discussion, but it's an objective fact. Um, but importantly, uh, you're likely to have friends that more friends that represent one side of the issue than the other. Uh, so the last, uh, the last element uh, that we throw in is called misperceptions. And uh, this is sort of the key part of the paper. And the, um, the uh, key um, uh, output of the misperception is that it leads agents to take, uh, take into account the selectivity of sharing, but only partially. And so this again, is um, consistent with the experimental evidence from Polgareski and Shim. Uh, so um, importantly, uh, the model we develop uh, is uh, consistent with agents having uh, different news diets. Um, so they have the same model of the world, they think of the world in the same way, and the only thing that may drive them apart is the extent to which they have access to different bits of information. And this will come from either firsthand sources or it will come from their secondhand sources, i.e. the friends that share information with them. Okay, so to preview the results, we divide results into uh, two, um, uh, two groups. One is on individual learning and the second is on social learning. And uh, of course, to talk about polarization in a society, you have to talk about uh, social learning. However, the results on individual learning are um, indicative or, or give you pretty much all the intu intuition you need to understand the social learning. So uh, the first um, uh, result is that indeed the selective sharing can distort learning. And these, uh, we have fully Bayesian uh, agents, uh, just to bear in mind, um, the only thing that distinguishes or agents from uh, a much more standard setting is that they have this uh, misperception. So the selective sharing can distort learning if and only if these agents hold misperceptions. 
And of course, as I go into the model, I will uh, say much more about what we mean by these misperceptions. Uh, importantly, all agents hold the same uh, type of misperception. So what we find is uh, in the short run, which we can think of as scarce information, it's just one round of sharing, these distortions can occur even with balanced news diets. Or if you think of high quality information as a balanced news diet, uh, then this dis distortion can occur with only misperception. Now, you might expect in the long run, as, uh, uh, as more and more information gets in, these distortions should disappear, but in fact, these distortions can be worse. Uh, but again, uh, to, well, so to have these distortions appear in the long run, now uh, it's important to have an unbalanced news diet and low quality of information. And so uh, the unbalanced news diet uh, drives the uh, polarization, as you see in the next slide, in the long run. Uh, so uh, the direction of the distortion uh, in terms of uh, distorted learning, it doesn't need to be uh, in the direction of the news diet imbalance. But uh, again, we'll talk about what that really means. Um, and so even though we've developed this model that has no fake news or no media bias that can uh, generate polarization, uh, we do have um, uh, an extension that can be thought of as fake news. And what we find is that this fake news can also distort learning, but only through these mis, uh, this misperceived selective sharing uh, that we develop. Okay, so on polarization, we, can, we find that it can be caused by sharing of people's um, uh, echo cha chambers, right? So we, that's what we think of as friends or uh, your, your uh, group of friends. Um, and it's possible even if all unbalanced, uh, even if you're all unbalanced in the same direction. Uh, so I'm gonna just pick people at random from my screen here. Uh, Laura um, and I might have uh, friends both biased in the same direction, uh, but it's possible that Laura's friends are uh, a little bit more balanced than mine. And it's still possible that we diverge in our beliefs. Uh, so what do we also find is that it can increase uh, with the expansion of social connections or decrease. In, find what, in fact, what we find is that if you expand uh, social connections proportionately, so everyone sort of doubles their social connections, where uh, we find that polarization does increase. Uh, of course, there are other ways to expand social connections, and we'll, uh, uh, we'll uh, characterize the exact structure of the echo chambers uh, that, can, uh, that will give us uh, expansion of polarization or not. So finally, uh, we find that uh, polarization can be curbed by in, uh, increasing information quality, not quantity. So, um, uh, and there are sort of uh, two important things to note here. One is that not only can it increase with information quality, it can also be somewhat mo non-monotonic uh, where it first decreases, sorry, uh, polarization first uh, increases with information quality and then decreases uh, with information quality. But what we also find is uh, we can do some, um, uh, we can find uh, sort of different institutions that mitigate the polarization. Uh, and we show that uh, we have, uh, if we have news aggregators, this can serve uh, as one uh, way uh, to mitigate um, polarization. And we find the uh, sufficient degree of aggregation uh, that allows this. Okay. so. Lots of related literature. Uh, I think I'm going to skip it for now um, since my time is a little bit short. Um, but just highlight uh, a few of these, uh, only to say uh, that you know lots of studies on polarization are out there. This is only a very few. Uh, generally, uh, they depend on behavioral biases, which we don't have or different preferences, which we don't have, or biased media. And so we have none of these. Uh, uh, <clears throat> sorry, polarization is entirely driven by new sharing and this misperception. Um, there's uh, the paper that we have. Um, it also falls in this category of uh, misperception in social learning, which is a, a newer field of economic theory. Um, and importantly, a, a lot of these um, uh, a lot of these papers uh, rely on agents having different worldviews, 
Uh, but in our model, uh, these agents actually have the same worldview. And of course, we uh, have agents that are actually Bayesian. Uh, similar for learning in networks, uh, uh, often there is uh, non, non uh, Bayesian updating uh, or agents are sharing beliefs. Uh, rather, in our, uh, in our framework, agents are sharing the news they have and the news causes them to update their beliefs. Um, and so uh, there are obviously empirical studies. I won't go into those. Okay, so I'm gonna skip the roadmap just to, in the interest of time um, and jump into the model. Um, so we start with agents, as I said, and we have a group of finitely many agents. Uh, agents with whom uh, agent I has social connections will be called friends of I. And it's these friends of I that will share information with uh, I. Uh, time is discrete. Um, and uh, cap T can be thought of as infinity or uh, can be infinity. There's a persistent state of the world, uh, omega, and this it's, omega can either be state A or state B, cap capital A, capital B. <clears throat> and this is realized at period zero. There's a common prior pi that the state of the world is A. And so that's common to all agents. Um, in period T with some probability gamma, agent I gets a private signal, SIT, about, uh, that's informative of the state of the world. Uh, so SIT can take values little a or little b. And so the probability that the signal is little a, conditional on the state of the world being cap a is q. Uh, and the, the probability of the state of the world being b, sorry, the uh, probability of the uh, signal being b, conditional on the state of the world being a is one minus q. And we're gonna assume that Q is strictly greater than a half uh, so that uh, information uh, is informative. And we also will refer uh, in the future to Q as the quality of information. Uh, the signals that are here are independent across agents and periods conditional on the state. So they all uh, receive uh, the same quality of information and at the same rate. Uh, so uh, selective information sharing. So as I said, uh, what we want to reflect is this selectivity. Now in each period, an agent can either stay silent or share their received signal with friends. And so of course, this, uh, if you're on Twitter, you share a particular article, uh, but we don't allow them to edit the signal or produce fake signals. Uh, so there are different types of agents, uh, and they're fixed and known. So we call uh, adogmatic agents agents who share only if the state is if the signal is little a, and b dogmatic agents share only if the signal is little b, and then normal agents share any signal. So what we have in mind with these dogmatic agents or dogmatic friends is there your friends in the network who are stubborn or narrow-minded? Um, uh, I like to use my mother in this example, uh, who's always sending me one particular type of article. Um, and uh, if you wanted to model these folks, uh, you could think of them as having degenerate priors that do not respond at all to new information. And it's important to note that in the model, uh, it's only, it's important, sorry, that, uh, we only need a few dogmatic friends, right? And here I think crazy uncle, I say think crazy uncle. Um, and what we uh, like to pull up is this, um, uh, this uh, image pull from Twitter. And, you know, so this is, uh, goes back to when masks uh, were required and some were fighting against it. And uh, the, um, the poster said, do not spout conspiracy theories or regurgitate misinformation you got from your dumb uncle on Facebook. And that's exactly the idea we have about these dogmatic agents. Uh, it's someone in your network who continually uh, uh, sends information about a particular uh, side of the world. Okay, so to uh, continue, I need a bit of notation. Uh, so we have normal agents in the economy and we denote the number of normal friends of that agent I as NI. Uh, the number of A dogmatic friends for agent I will be DAI 
and the number of B dogmatic friends is DBI. Okay, so these numbers all together constitutes I's echo chamber or I's group of friends, if you don't like the word echo chamber. Uh, so this triple is going to be important for how agent I learns. Uh, importantly, if we think of DAI and DBI as equal, then we say that agent I's echo chamber is balanced. And if they're unequal, we say that agent I's echo chamber is unbalanced. So this is uh, one illustration. So I and J in this uh, illustration are normal agents. Uh, uh, the blue agents would be the adogmatic agents that may be connected to agent I. Uh, uh, the red uh, agents are uh, the B dogmatic agents. In, in this example, agent I has two adogmatic agents. Uh, agent J has no dogmatic agents. Uh, age, a, 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 friends, sorry. Agent uh, I has one dogmatic friend and agent uh, J has two uh, B dogmatic friends. Okay, so this picture is kind of important, uh, but it's, it's not important, the structure of this network. Uh, we can handle a fully connected network. We can ha handle a star network. Uh, any sort of network structure can be handled. And the reason is that we only consider one round of information sharing and not sharing and sharing, uh, but we can accommodate this idea of sharing and sharing and sharing. Uh, if someone has a question about that later on, we can, I can uh, take it. Okay, so um, what about beliefs? Uh, so what we uh, need to form beliefs is the uh, history of all signals received by agent I up to period T. And so the uh, history consists of my own signals, the signals that were shared by my friends, but also the silence of my dogmatic friends. And the silence plays a big role in how beliefs are updated. So uh, agent I's Bayesian prior is going to be mu. Uh, and mu uh, is the probability with which uh, omega is uh, state A. Um, and so uh, uh, when we look at short run learning, um, just to be a little bit more rigorous, uh, we're thinking about the expected uh, value of that prior after one round of sharing. So that's the expected value of mu uh, when uh, S, uh, SI1. And long run learning, uh, we can think of that as abundant information. And then we're thinking of the uh, value of mu, the posterior, as uh, uh, T goes to infinity. OK, so importantly, uh, given everything I've just told you, the expected value of the posterior after one round of sharing would just be the prior, pi. And uh, the uh, belief uh, when t goes to infinity uh, should be exactly the belief um, and place one uh, on, the, uh, on the state be of the world being A. So you should have exactly correct learning uh, uh, in the limit. Uh, and after one round of uh, sharing, the expected value should be the prior. Uh, so what we've noticed before uh, uh, to this point then is that selective sharing alone, even with an unbalanced echo chamber, cannot distort learning or cause polarization. So we need to add something to this model and that thing we add is misperception. Um, and so uh, the important thing about um, um, misperception and selective sharing is that there's a difficulty in interpreting silence. Right? Is silence because you didn't receive a signal or is it silence because uh, you hid the signal? So here, mis miscalibrations are possible. So what we assume is that instead of uh, thinking that agents receive um, a, a signal with probability gamma, in this, uh, in this uh, paper, we assume uh, agents think uh, the, everyone receives a signal with probability gamma hat. And all that's required here is that gamma hat is not equal to gamma, the true gamma. So what does this mean? Uh, if gamma hat is strictly less than gamma, then I'm thinking that I'm actually more informed uh, than my friends. Um, it means that I, um, uh, I have a higher rate of getting information, but I think that my friends have a lower rate of getting information. And this is consistent with a lot of psychological research talking about an illusory superiority or the better than average effect. Uh, the reverse is uh, thinking that gamma hat is strictly greater than gamma. So my friends are actually more informed than I am. Uh, and uh, this can be thought of as insecurity. 
So now we can go to our first uh, set of results on short run learning. So again, in short run learning, we're just looking at the expected value of the posterior after one round of sharing. And in a standard model, this should just be the prior. So the first result says that uh, if we have an agent with a balanced echo chamber, so we're not even looking at unbalances in echo chambers now, and we have the case of illusory superiority or gamma hat strictly less than gamma, then we do get distorted learning. In particular, the distorted learning depends on the value of the uh, uh, prior, pi. So if the prior is uh, indicative that the state, uh, uh, that A is a more likely state of the world, then we have that the posterior or the expected posterior uh, is uh, distorted above the prior. So you, you read uh, too much into silence. Uh, and so you go towards the state of the world uh, being A. Uh, and so the reverse is true uh, for gamma hat greater than gamma. And now what you, uh, uh, what you assume is that uh, you read too little into silence. So the state of the world goes uh, in the opposite direction of the, uh, of the prior. So I'm going to pause here for, or maybe, uh, oh, so let me talk a little bit about the intuition. Uh, and the intuition is just that if we think of some agent I with an echo chamber D, A, D, B, and N, uh, then the number of A received signals would be uh, only from A friends and normal friends. And similarly, the number of B signals received are only uh, those uh, um, signals received from B dogmatic friends and normal friends. And so when we think about the silence, as I said, this is important, uh, DA minus AA is the silent signals from A dogmatic friends, and DB minus BB, the, the, the actual signals received, are the silence from signals from B dogmatic friends. And so I'll just uh, briefly, I know this is a crazy looking slide, uh, maybe for some people in this audience, uh, but um, after this, I'll pause. Uh, but it's important to note how beliefs are updated. So this is the posterior belief. And after some, uh, some minor transformations, uh, it will look like this. Uh, we haven't done anything funny. Um, and what's important are these two terms, this Q uh, with this exponent and gamma hat with this exponent here. And so this cap Q is just one minus Q over Q. And so this whole term here uh, represents correct information share, correct uh, interpretation of information. And the, this uh, term over here uh, represents the incorrect in, in, uh, interpretation of information. And the reason is, uh, if we look at these exponents, these are actual A signals, actual B signals. So we verify, sorry, we know for, for a fact that these are true signals of the world. What's going on over here are the silent signals. And this is where we don't know how to interpret silence. So gamma hat, uh, notice, uh, includes this gamma hat. This is the misperception. So if gamma hat here is equal to gamma, we have no trouble. We're going to have uh, that the uh, posterior is exactly equal to the prior, rather the expected posterior is exactly equal to the prior. But uh, this is not what happens. Uh, what happens is this gamma hat term uh, gets distorted up and down depending on uh, the direction of the silence. And so uh, it's still unclear that the expected posterior should be greater than the prior, uh, but I will just tell you to trust me, and it is, and I will actually show you some pictures uh, to say that it is. But for now, I'm just going to pause a second to see if there are questions. Okay, so I, few, I see a few questions in the chat. Does agent I, oh, my co-author is on, so great. Uh, you can ask all kinds of questions in the chat and my co-author can help with that. Okay, so uh, so this is what the posterior looks like and I'm, I'm going to just move on to what happens when we do have an unbalanced echo chamber and we have one round of learning. So now with an unbalanced echo chamber, so note it, even with misperception alone, we do have distortions. But now with the unbalanced echo chamber, these distortions depend on the direction of the echo chamber. 
And so in particular, let's think of an agent uh, that has uh, more adogmatic friends than B dogmatic friends, then there's some threshold uh, belief, QS, sorry, threshold quality of information, QSR, strictly greater than a half, such that if Q is below that threshold, uh, then again, uh, the, uh, the direction of the distortion depends on this gamma hat, and if it's greater or less than gamma. And what we find is that if gamma hat is less than gamma or illusory superiority, then the expected posterior is distorted towards the A majority. So why is this somewhat surprising? Uh, so you're aware that your A friends are sharing only A signals. You're aware that they're distorting learning. You also uh, are aware, or at least you think they're less informed than you are. So you'd imagine that you discount uh, the signals uh, that they send. But what in fact happens is you know the signals they send are true, but when there comes to silence, there is uh, some difficulty interpreting it. And because uh, gamma hat is less than gamma, you actually read uh, too little into their silence and reading too little into their silence uh, means that you're distorted towards uh, their beliefs. Uh, or rather towards that, that state of the world. And so of course the reverse is true uh, under gamma hat. So there's under, uh, under reaction to silence and that favors the A dogmatic majority. Um, so uh, I promised a, a, a picture um, and the picture here is just illustrating that when gamma hat is less than gamma, one example, and we're looking at the ratio of the expected posterior to the prior, in a standard Bayesian model, this, uh, this term is one, but you'll see that uh, the term is not one in this model with misperceptions. So in this example, N is one, so I have one normal friend. Uh, I have three A dogmatic friends and two B dogmatic friends. And you see that I'm distorted uh, towards the state of the world being one. Oh, sorry, yes, being, uh, sorry, A. <laughs> Um, but then there's this other part down here that you're kind of wondering what's going on. And this is the distortion due only to the misperception. But what can happen is that the distortion from the uh, unbalance in your echo chamber can be so large, so it's larger here, uh, four and two versus three and two, and that uh, overwhelms the distortion due to the misperception. Okay, so I see uh, one more question in the chat. Maybe I missed something about the timing uh, and uh, my co-author is answering, so I'm not going to pause and you can read what's in the chat. Okay, so now that we've uh, covered short run learning, we can talk about long run learning and, dis and figure out uh, what happens when we have abundant information. So once again, we think about the case when DA is greater than DB. Uh, now we show that there exists a threshold quality of information related to the long run. And this threshold quality is, is strictly less than one. And so as long as Q is strictly less than this threshold, then we have that agents place probability one on the state of the world being A, regardless of the true state of the world. Uh, on the other hand, uh, if, and that's true, if gamma hat is less than gamma, that's the case of uh, illusory superiority. superiority. In the opposite case, agent, a, uh, agents place probability one on the state of the world being B, regardless of the true state of the world. And it's important to know that if Q is above this threshold, then we have correct learning. So um, with, uh, with uh, long run learning, the uh, effects of uh, distortion due to misperception they disappear, and all we have is the distortion due to the imbalance in the echo chamber. And so uh, what we can also show is that as this Q threshold, this Q threshold is actually increasing in the magnitude of the, uh, the, the unbalance in your echo chamber. It's also increasing in the magnitude of the misperception, gamma minus gamma hat, and it's decreasing in the number of your normal friends. Uh, so I'll skip the intuition because it really follows very closely from the short, uh, the short run intuition. And again, everything is driven by the silence and either reading too little into the silence or reading too much into the silence. 
So now we can talk about expansions of echo chambers, all right? And so we focus on the case here of gamma hat less than gamma, again, this illusory superiority case. And so uh, the result essentially says that if we fix uh, some agent, again, that's balanced towards uh, the adogmatics uh, in his uh, network, uh, and we have a Q hat, uh, uh, level of uh, Q less than um, uh, the threshold for uh, long run learning Q. Then if we created this new echo chamber and we're creating a new echo chamber where we're scaling up uh, the A and the B dogmatic friends by some, uh, some share, uh, some uh, term lambda and scaling up normal friends with lambda N, then we can show that this uh, long run uh, learning threshold will uh, go below Q hat, that fixed threshold we had before, that fixed Q we had before, if this lambda N, the growth rate of uh, normal friends exceeds uh, this expression. And so what this really tells us is that we can characterize how fast we need to grow our normal friends relative to uh, the other friends in our network and relative to the growth of the other friends in our network, such that we can restore correct learning. So we're quantifying how much faster normal friends need to grow to neutralize the echo chamber imbalance. So if we want to think of this as guiding algorithm design, uh, then that's good. Uh, and so with that, now we can talk about polarization. So polarization uh, is uh, all the results are driven by the individual learning, but uh, we have to talk about, we have to have some definition of polarization in a group of agents. And so how we define it is just the absolute difference. Uh, if, we're, if we're considering any two agents that are connected, we're looking at the absolute difference between their beliefs and we're simply uh, summing them, sorry, they don't need to be connected. So think of any two agents in the network uh, and uh, every pair of two agents were summing up the differences in their beliefs, the absolute differences in their beliefs. And this is simply a scaling parameter that ensures we're between zero and one. And so in the long run, uh, this is a very simple expression. We have some agents who learn that the state of the world is A, given, them, uh, given the quality of information Q. We have some agents who learn the state of the world is B, uh, given quality of information Q. And uh, this is divided by the total number of agents squared up. <clears throat> so uh, what we, that's what I just described. Um, so now, as, it, as I said, it's really a co corollary to the previous results. And we can show that uh, agents in society have echo chambers. If they have uh, echo chambers with different imbalances, then there's some Q such that pi of Q, that's the polarization is strictly greater than zero. So we will get um, uh, some uh, polarization with the right value of information quality. And here, uh, it's important to know we need the misperception. If misperception goes away, this result goes away. Uh, importantly, we don't have fake news or different worldviews. Everyone sees that same gamma hat and otherwise everyone uh, is, uh, is the same except for the composition of their friends. Uh, so we can talk about how polarization changes with information quality. Uh, one might imagine that uh, polarization should decrease as people get better information, but it's not necessarily the case. So if we have some network uh, and we start increasing the quality of information, then it's possible that this polarization uh, either decreases, as we would expect, or first increases, then decreases. So it's non-monotonic. But the intuition for right increases and decreases is fairly straightforward. If the uh, value of Q is sufficiently low, then more people or the majority of people have incorrect learning. So polarization is low because they're all incorrectly learning. And as you increase the value of Q, more people begin learning correctly. And ultimately everyone begins. Uh, and so more people learning correctly increases polarization because they're still the uh, incorrect learners. But as Q goes uh, to one, then everyone begins to learn correctly and polarization decreases again. 
Okay, so um, let's uh, skip this. Uh, and we wanna talk about interventions. So we'd like to talk about how, um, how it might be that we can mitigate polarization, right? And the, the, uh, the key thing that uh, can help us with, in, uh, with polarization is improving information quality. And since it's unlikely we can get Fox News or CNN to tell us more of the truth and less of stuff that's, um, you know, you know what I mean, uh, <laughs> um, or get these crazy uncle friends to change uh, what they share, then uh, since those things are difficult, another thing we can do is just aggregate signals. And so we can create a new signal, uh, call it S hat I M T out of any M signals that arrive. And all we're doing is basically averaging uh, these M signals. And if that average um, is less than uh, M, so we can do it the, both ways, then we return zero. So of all the M signals, half the M signals were, uh, were in, the wrong, uh, in the wrong direction, so towards B, then we just simply report zero. And if half the signals were above uh, M, sorry, M over two, uh, I'm, now I'm mixing that up. If more than half the signals uh, were towards the state of the world being A, then uh, we report a one. And so with this new information structure, which is really, we can think of as an aggregation of these signals. So we're losing information quantity, but we're increasing information quality. And we can find a threshold for M, the number of signals we need to aggregate, such that we reduce polarization to zero. And so, um, so we can mitigate polarization, and that's great news. Um, if we can think of this as uh, uh, news aggregators uh, that do something like this, whether it's Yahoo News uh, or um, <clears throat> other such news. And, um, and so that's great news. Uh, but uh, the other thing we want to think about is different types of misperception. So some of you might have had the question, what if what we're uh, misperceiving is the probability with which normal or dogmatic friends share signals? And we can uh, uh, modify the model to include that sort of misperception, or uh, rather change the, the form of misperception to be in this, um, in this di uh, direction. And we get the same results, but importantly, the, the, the channel through which um, uh, mislearning occurs is still through silence. And so another thing we might think of as another type of misperception is I'm not sure who's an A dogmatic or B dogmatic friend. And again, with that type of misperception, uh, we get mislearning uh, through silence. And then last thing is, my, maybe we think the quality of information is, uh, it, it, we, we're just not sure about the quality of information or we get it incorrect in some way. So maybe we think that information quality that you're receiving is higher than it actually is. And this can be thought of as fake news. So you see a, a news article and you essentially take it at face value when in fact it's not uh, quite the quality of information, not as informative as you think it's going to be. And so again, uh, these are all different types of misperception, but the, and any one of these alone can generate polarization, uh, but the, mess, uh, the mechanism is still uh, through silence. And um, so, that's sort of the talk um, that I'm, I'm gonna pause here so we can uh, get some questions. But in summary, uh, we uh, really examine how people can share news, how people need, sharing news can give rise to polarization. We show that we don't need fake news. We don't need, uh, the only thing that's important are these uh, different news diets. We need misperception. We also need low quality of information. So if you want to think of the expansion in, um, in the internet as driving or having more low quality information, uh, and uh, it's important that uh, misperception combined with this low quality of information is what can drive polarization. And so <clears throat> the final point I'll make here, or just a reminder, is that we can think about mitigating this polarization by aggregating use. 
So let me pause there. Um, and uh, thanks to Danielle, we had uh, questions being answered in the chat, but I just want to hear see if there are additional questions in our last 13 minutes. All right, uh, thank you very much. Um, so I'll just ask the question I just put in the chat. So maybe you just uh, answer it online. Um, I was just wondering if there is uh, any way I can debias myself in your model. Like, uh, for example, I strategically stop listening to a subset of my friends. Is, is, is there a way to do this? Um, so the the challenge with these sorts of models is you are unaware that you don't uh, have the correct value of the um, rate at which you're, uh, everyone's receiving information. And the way the way you think of that is, uh, so we have uh, some distribution of these gammas. Uh, so that's the rate at which you're receiving information. And uh, the true gamma is outside of the uh, support of the distribution you uh, assign to gamma. So because it's outside of the support, there's absolutely no way for you to learn that gamma hat. You don't know it's out there. You simply don't know you're wrong. Uh, and there's no learning to know that you're wrong. So when you see information, you take it, uh, you take the signals you, you see as face value. So they're, they're um, verifiable signals. Um, and, uh, and so there's no way for you to actually learn that you're getting the information updating wrong. And because there's no way for you to learn that, uh, there's no reason for you to think you should ignore some friends over others. But you're fully aware that some friends are biased. You're fully aware of that. Uh, and would I strategically uh, not listen to them? No, because they're actually sending me uh, information that is useful in learning the true state of the world. So I don't want to ignore their information. I simply want to uh, interpret it appropriately. But I do not know that the model is misspecified. So there's this is kind of the way around uh, common prior. We all have to converge somewhere. So we do have common priors, uh, but that's right. I don't know that the model of my model of the world is misspecified. And it's because I don't know that my model of the world is misspecified, that's what leads to, you're right, um, uh, this distorted learning. Hi, I have a question. Hi. Hi. Uh, so um, you mentioned that you have, your model can cover uh, situations where you don't know necessarily uh, who is uh, biased and would I prefer, so I can imagine of a model where I don't know, I, I, I think that everyone is normal. Would I prefer to be told if my neighbors are biased, if my friends are biased? Yeah, that's, a, that's an interesting question. Would I prefer to be told? Um, so, so I guess in your um, model, I think all my friends are normal, uh, but some of them are actually biased. And the key with the, mis the misspecified models is there's just no way for me to even know that they're biased. So to even make that choice. Uh, so if there was some sort of all knowing information designer, uh, then yes, that all knowing information designer would tell you these friends are biased, but there's no way for me as an agent in the model to even know that they're biased to make that choice. Does that make sense? Sure. Uh, but the question is, would I be, would I be learning better if I knew that they were biased? If, if that designer gave me this information? Yes, uh, absolutely. So that's right. So if if I knew that they were biased, uh, then I would interpret their silence more correctly. Um, mm -hmm. And because I'm interpreting their silence more correctly, my, I'm I have better uh, uh, updating um, 
And so, so if you're thinking of the world in which there's no other type of misperception, then yes, I have better updating and I actually learned correctly in that case. Thank you. Good questions. But um, just uh, for my understanding, but wouldn't I learn who is biased if I just received the only information for A from them? If it goes on long enough, right? Uh, so, so when we um, so when we uh, look at this particular version, where I'm not sure who's uh, biased or not. Sorry, when I when I'm not sure who's biased, then you have to modify the model uh, to make it realistic. And the way you modify model is that uh, uh, your A friends are sending both signals but uh, sending A signals with a higher probability than they send B signals. And, and so that's why you're still unsure who's A and who's B. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Great. Um, great, these are great questions. Any more great questions? I know I went through that super fast. Okay. Great. So if no one uh, has questions, uh, well, thank you very much uh, for presenting. Um, this was uh, very insightful. Uh, thank you for coming. And uh, who do we have next time? Does anyone? Yeah, let me make the announcement maybe. So in two weeks on the 10th of May, we have Annie Leong from Northwestern University will give a talk with us. So. You want to attend? No, so, sorry, go ahead. I, I just want to thank you. Uh, you know, this was a great audience uh, and a great opportunity. And I see that I'm in the companies of, of many other, many great uh, theorists. So uh, thank you for including me in this uh, series. Thanks a lot for, for joining. That was a great pleasure for us. If there is any questions, there is still time. So don't be shy. <laughs> Otherwise, um, we are going to close uh, and we will see you in two weeks, fortunately. And Rene, thanks, thanks again a lot uh, for, for being with us today. That was great. Thank you so much. Uh, take care. Thank you too. And see you next time. See you Bye -bye. next time. <laughs>